Good morning. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. Today, we're going to be talking about biochar. So this right here is the ring of fire kiln that we received to the Camp De Field of Dreams three-year scholarship. Now, this is pretty tall. As you can tell, I'm five foot seven. That's at least four feet tall. It's a double ring of metal. So there is a ring inside and then a ring outside of it. And that is going to help us get a really high temp biochar. You can see the double layers of, of rings inside of this. So what is biochar? Biochar is charcoal that is made from biomass like straw, manure, your animal's bedding, or wood applying heat without oxygen. So the heat is gonna bake the biomass, releasing flammable gases and leaving behind a solid carbon structure called charcoal. Now, the good thing about charcoal or biochar, it's gonna absorb a lot of water, air, and nutrients, making this available to your plants. That is the key. How much of it can the plant uptake? The difference between compost and biochar works like this. Compost may last in your soil for several years, but biochar will last in your soil for several decades or centuries, trapping and holding nutrients and then releasing it to the plants as they need it. So when you're talking about, would it be best to put compost on my soil? Would it be best to put biochar on my soil? Here at Storkey Farmstead, we're gonna combine the two and apply them both. One for a quick fix and one looking into the future for my grandchildren to be able to come out here and grow food healthily. And as they're growing it, I hope one of them said, you know, my grandmother put biochar here in the soil and that's what made this red clay so viable. When I say high temperature, I'm talking 500 to 1000 degrees Celsius. High temperature biochar has proportionately more ash in it. We took a class last night that just explained to us why. Why do we even need biochar? Well, there's a lot of reasons. The cost of fertilizers has steadily gone up. And with that, you're finding a lot of large farms and small landowners are like, I can't afford that. Well, here at Storky Farmstead, we're real big into making our own soil amendments. And one of the soil amendments that we are going to be making on site is biochar. As you can see, I live in a very rural area in Southeast Louisiana, and it is extremely easy for me to get a hold to biomass that I can convert into biochar. So what is biomass? Biomass could be bedding from your animals, it can even be manure. It could be um, living plants that you're taking out like plant biomass from your garden if you didn't necessarily want to compost it, or it can be trees. Now here in Southeast Louisiana, we get a lot of really big thunderstorms that just kind of pop up when we get hurricanes. Because of that, it is not uncommon for years after a hurricane to have very large oak trees down on public property and people's private property. So for us, it's extremely easy to get a hold to this oak and pine, lots of pine, and turn it into a soil amendment of the greatest necessity for us at this stage. Something that we learned are there are different types of biochar for different types of soil. So in this case, I would recommend if you have had a soil test and you know that the pH in your soil is low, there's a specific type of biochar that you need to be making. And that type of biochar would be the, the flame carbonization or the high temp, okay? That's gonna give you a higher pH and you are not going to want to compost it first. You're gonna to wanna to take it out of the kiln, put it directly into your garden. That's gonna raise the pH in your soil. Now for us, we have a pretty steady pH. So I don't necessarily wanna raise it and I don't necessarily wanna lower it. But what we're gonna do here at Starkey Farmstead is I'm going to take my biochar that we're gonna be making this weekend and I will do a video just on that, on how to make it but this is an intro video on what exactly is it and why are we gonna make it the way we are. So we're gonna do a high temperature flame carbonization biochar and I'm going to take it from there 
into my chicken coop. Now the chickens will eat it and that's okay. It's not going to hurt them, but I compost in my chicken coop. So adding some biochar, I'm going to add about 25% of the mass of the compost. I'm going to add that in biochar and I'm just going to kind of mix it in just like I did if you watched our mushroom compost making. So this is going to be going in that same group where I've already added the fungi and the good bacteria into my compost. Now I'm going to be adding the biochar. And why? Why biochar? Guys, this technique has been around for thousands of years in agriculture, going from one civilization to another. But with cheap fertilization in, in this century, we have backed away from these techniques. Biochar is unique in the fact that it's a very porous wood, okay? So it's going to absorb water. It's going to absorb oxygen. And you can even compost without turning your piles if you've added biochar to that pile. Isn't that interesting? Now, when you compost biochar, the really cool thing is, is that the organic matter from the compost will bind with your biochar giving it layers and it will actually help it hold on to the nutrients that are in your compost and make that go longer and make it more healthy. Now that is the most simple way for me to put it. You can get very technical with biochar. Learned that last night. And I don't want to scare anybody because I feel like you should just get out there and the best way to learn is to try. So you have to get out there for you yourself. With some of the things we were talking about in class last night, here at Storky Farmstead, I'm going to be adding biochar to my rabbit urine buckets. I don't necessarily want to feed it to the rabbits, but I want to grab one to the nitrogen and the carbon, especially the nitrogen that's found in rabbit urine. We actually sell that as a pest deterrent and a nitrogen fertilizer. So if I can grab on to more of that nitrogen, adding the biochar to the urine, then I'm gonna have a superior product, not only for the people who purchase it, but for us here at Starkey Farmstead. Since we don't use any commercialized fertilizers, pesticides, or soil amendments, we make it all here. That's very important to me. We are also gonna be adding it to our worm casting bins because they will intake it and they themselves will coat it with organic matter and poop it back out, making my worm castings one step higher. And that's always what I want. It's always what I'm looking for, is the better the product, the less you need of it. So we make compost, we make worm castings, we make our own foliar teas, worm tea, compost tea, we even make comfrey tea. We use rabbit urine, we use chicken manure, but now I'm so super excited because we're going to be using biochar and all of these processes, we're going to be adding biochar and bringing up our levels of nutrients, our oxygen in the soil, bringing back this hard compacted red, red clay back to life, going from dirt to soil. Because we say it all the time, guys, and you know it's true. The healthier the soil, the healthier the plant. The healthier the plant, the less pest attacks you have and the more nutrients you are uptaking for your food. So thank you for watching Storky Formstead. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to make a playlist solely dedicated to biochar, the diff different methods in making it, adding it to manure, adding it into rabbit urine, adding it into compost. We're going to be showing you how to lay it into your no-till organic beds into your raised beds, even into your, into your tilled soil. So follow us along on this journey. I'm super excited. Thank you for rowing in our boat. If you yourself have used Biotour or done some extensive studying, share your knowledge with us. That's what we're all here for. This is a learning opportunity, not just for me, but for you. Have a blessed day. Thank you for watching.